This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. We are ready to get it on here. We want to print. Cool thing about Lightroom, think about it this way. When you go into Photoshop or Illustrator or InDesign or even Microsoft Word, whatever, when you print something, you say, fall print, and boom, you make a print. You have options, but there's not a lot going on. Whatever Photoshop has on the screen, it kind of prints it for you. In Lightroom, you have a tremendous amount of options. Now, that to me doesn't make it difficult because eventually you're going to get this workflow going. You're going to create templates that you use all the time for your images. You just have more control. Let's talk about templates. Now, they're over here. Template browser. Let's open that up and go into Lightroom templates. There are a lot of them, I understand that. But there is a fundamental difference between the types of templates. Let me show you something here. Let's open up image settings. And I'm going to open up cells. I've got them both open at the same time. Now this particular option right here, we can go to any one of these. We've got a custom overlap. And I like this one, that's kind of fun to work with. But notice what we have here. We've got an image settings, rotate to fit, photo border, inner stroke. But down here in cells, you got all this stuff. For example, you could say, you know, I want to wipe out everything. I'll just clear the whole thing down and I'm going to start making my own. I think I want a five by seven and a half. Maybe I want one or two more of those. Maybe I want a seven by nine. You can choose anything you want here. And just keep going on and on and on. So we can make our own here. You can move them around. They have little tiny anchors here where we can resize them to do anything we want. That's a particular type of template. Now I'm going to go to this one right here. It's called Fine Art Mesh. Look what happens to my image settings and my cells when I do this. Notice how that changed? No more little buttons saying add things. And if we go back into image settings, let me reopen that, we now have a new option called Zoom to Fill. It's a different kind of box that you put your image in. Let's look at it that way. So if we come down here and select an image, it will pop up in that box. And you say, well, okay, but it's not really at the same proportion as the box. The box looks kind of square. The image is rectangular. So we have space here and here. I agree. Now, what do we do about that? Well, we could work with the margins. We could come down here and begin adjusting it until we got it where we want it. But what I like to do is use the new option that's available with this type of box, Zoom to Fill. If you don't see Zoom to Fill, it's not because you're doing something wrong, you're on a different template. So I'll select Zoom to Fill, and it will Zoom to Fill it. The cool thing now is I can come over to it, and I can readjust exactly what I want to see, because the proportion of the box is no longer fitting the proportion of the image, so it will expand it until it hits either the vertical or the horizontal. In this way, it's hitting vertical, so I get to actually move it back and forth left. So I have that kind of control over it. You also have things, for example, like margins. You can do it much more precisely over here. If you want to run like about a two centimeter margin on each side, you can do that. It's a little bit easier for you. If you're not into centimeters, you can go into inches. You can go into what I use most of the time, pica. Pica is a very clean measuring system. Six pica to an inch. Whatever you use, it doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and put that back at, say, inches. So I want maybe a 0.8. Now I can move it by dragging it this way. I have a difficult time getting to the number that I really want. So I typically would put that in there. So I go 0.8, press the tab key. 0.8, press the tab key top, bottom, you get the idea. I usually want about a two and a half on the bottom. So I'll go 2.5 in terms of inches. And the top, let's go ahead and make that one inch. So you can do it in a very precise way down here. Now, if we scroll down a little bit more, we can have a little bit more fun. We're working with one single image. That's it. That's fine. Maybe that's all you want to do. You can choose a different image all day long. What do you want to print? Of course, once you get it in there, we can readjust it, do whatever we want. But let's kick it up a little bit here. We have a page grid over here. 
I'm going to change rows to three, and I'll change columns to three. So we're getting something like, I suppose, a contact sheet kind of look to this thing right now. Maybe I want a little bit of spacing between each one. So I can go cell spacing down here and say give it about a 0.2 in inches. And again, trying to find 0.2 is impossible for me. I actually got it. Okay, so you got a 0.2, 0.2. If we come back up here again, we can put a stroke border on them. Notice the border, if I increase it, let me over-exaggerate it so you can see this. The border doesn't cover the photograph. The photograph will shrink to stay intact. And let's put a little bit of a border. We can still come into these and readjust each one, one at a time. Put them exactly where you want them to be. This is obviously more of a contact sheet. Now this option here would not have made sense until I had more than one image on the screen. And if I go ahead and select repeat one photo per page, it basically will give me the same image. And you say, why would I do that? Well, you could be making some kind of repeating poster. I remember when I graduated from high school, everybody got these thumbnail photographs that we, you know, we gave to all our friends and promised we would never, ever forget each other, which we always do. But if you want to do that, you can. You turn it off, it takes it back to the way it is. Notice something else that happened. Down here, there's now a little arrow that was grayed out, just like this one was. It's because I have more photos down here than can be displayed up here. And if I click that button, it will take me to the next page or the next or however many it needs to fill the quota of the images I have selected. If I click this button, it takes me back to the first page. Now, in the case of only having one, that's not a big deal. But if you had 15 pages, that would make it a little bit easier for you to get that done. Let's go into one of these others so we can look at the difference, like the overlap. That's kind of a fun one. Okay, it's a different type of template. So first off, I don't want the big box. So I'm going to go ahead and click in this one and just get rid of it. You want to add another one? Come over here. Well, let's leave them alone for now. Let's see what we can do. This is a box. This is a box. This is a box. We can move them around. We can resize them. You know, whatever you want to do. But we want to populate them with images. So let's start with, say, the water sprinkler down here. And I'm going to drop that in the main box. Then, I don't know, let's just take a couple of these images and stick them up here. So it's a garden, we're watering the garden, you know, you get the idea. How do we readjust things, though? Because, Andy, in the last one you showed me for a template, if I didn't like the position of the image within the box, I could move it, and I can't do that. I mean, I, I can move the box, I can resize the box, but how do you get the image on the inside to move like the other one? Hold down while you have this box selected the control key, and there's your little magic for putting it exactly where you want it to be. Let's go ahead and go up to this one, same thing, control key, maybe center it. Let's come down to this one, control key, maybe put it right about there. So we're changing it, we're moving it around. We can put things like, if you come back up to here, we can put on an inner stroke. The photo border is this white area that's right here. You can see if I can make that bigger or smaller. It will impact all the images equally if you want to do that. The inner stroke puts a nice fine stroke line on the inside. Again, you can use that or not. I think I'll take that off. And as a matter of fact, I think I'll take off the photo border too. Now rotate to fit. What it does is it tries to make a decision based on what you did and what it thinks is best. Usually I leave that off because I want to be in control here. And I know what I want to do most of the time. And so I usually don't use that option. So what we have here is our very own idea on how we might want to put images together. So what do we do with it now? Well, what if you want to use it again? You don't want to reinvent the wheel because as soon as we click over here on something else, that one will go away. So we want to save it. So let's come back way up here for a second and get rid of these by collapsing them. Let's go into user templates. You can see there's nothing there yet. Click the plus sign. Give it a name. Two up with overlay. It's going to go into the user's templates and I would strongly recommend that you leave it there because if you try to move it, and you can, you can put it anywhere on the hard drive you want, but if you leave it here, it will always be here. So if we go back into our templates here, you know, we can try different ones all day long. But if we go now 
back into our user and select that, you see it's ready for us to go. So what we're doing here is looking at ways that we, as designers, want our images printed. And you might just want them printed like this one right here, maximum size. Just put it in there and print it. And that's fine. But you've got all the control in the world with these templates to do literally anything that you want. When it comes to printing, Lightroom is awesome. On to the next.